So the power cuts continue. We've gone, this is, we're going into our second week now with power cuts and now we're doing 10 hour days, uh, three hours at a time. They're doing three, three hours in the morning, three hours in the late afternoon, early evening, and then two hours at night from like 10 to midnight or something like that. So in the meantime, you know, we sit here and wait. I wanted to share a story with you. I met a guy the other day on my Facebook group, uh, Monta Monta B Expats and Amigos here in Monte. He's passing through, he's traveling, he's, he's uh, a digital nomad. He's a young guy, he's a lot younger than most of the people that I associate with around here. He's also another YouTube creator, and he has a very interesting story, and I'm going to share it with you right after this. Hey! Hello there. So who are you? I'm just sitting here minding my own business. You just popped in. <laughs> so my name's Eric. <laughs> All right, my yeah. full name, Eric Benjamin Peterson. I'm from Minnesota, central Minnesota. Yeah. And uh, I've been living abroad for a really long time. Um, I, I studied abroad when I was in college. Mm -hmm. And I studied and lived in Chile, and I studied and lived in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I graduated college, I basically ended up moving abroad and really enjoying being outside the U.S. And recently after a bunch of, bunch of kind of bad stuff happened, some family stuff, I ended up going back home. I bought a motorcycle. And then I thought, you know, I could use all this knowledge and experience I've, I've had living abroad and kind of give people pointers because I've been doing it for a long time. I mean, some people obviously have done it longer, but I feel like I had some things to say and some help to give. And it, it seemed like a good way to make my, my trip <clears throat> and this like travel lifestyle I've had for a while, you know, for 10 years, 15 years. It gives more value to people, and it's a way for me to feel like I'm I'm doing something and giving something mm -hmm. back instead of so just have... like traveling and working. I'm traveling, working, and also giving something back, some information, yeah. value on on my channel and on my. So you have a YouTube media. channel? Yeah, yeah. What's it called? Generic expat. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put a link up here. <laughs> so, and how long have you had it? So I started the channel just after I left Minnesota on this project. Mm -hmm. And I did my first recordings in Mexico and Monterey in around this time two years ago. Yeah. So I think my first video came up probably end of October 2022. Mm -hmm. So I, by the end of this month, it'll be two full years. Yeah. How many videos do you have? So in total, I think it's close to 200. 200. But yeah. there's a lot of shorts. And the yeah. shorts one, the short videos I make, a lot of them are just really small parts of the long forms. Mm -hmm. So not all of them are like, you know, unique. They're kind mm -hmm. of like small cuts of the big, the longer ones, a lot of them. Yeah. When you left Minnesota, were you planning on doing this? I mean, were you planning on doing the YouTube channel as well as all the work you do? And then not to mention the fact that you're riding a motorcycle from North America to South America. Where, what was your plan? I mean, is that what your original plan was? Was to be a YouTuber? So this YouTube thing actually came out of me meeting a YouTuber in Mexico. Okay. A guy named David that's from England. He mm -hmm. had been traveling around making a lot of YouTube videos. And he kind of inspired me by saying, basically, he told me, if I wanted to make a somewhat, like, successful YouTube channel, I would make videos about like going to nice places and living in nice places in Latin America, but that would be my hell. And I was like, that sounds like something I would enjoy doing, you know? Yeah. So then he said, he kind of like gave me this idea about how that would actually create lots of ad revenue for the, you know, the YouTube, Google ad mm -hmm. revenue thing. You know, I don't know if you care much about that, but he said, yeah, if I wanted to make money on the Google ads part, that's what I would do. And, yeah. you know, I, I actually did a lot of travel on motorcycle before I did this trip. Yeah. So it's not like I, I decided to do it out of nowhere. I had already traveled around and worked online. Mm -hmm. Adding the YouTube channel was just something I thought, well, this is my way of getting back while I do these things that I'm already doing. Right, right. And I've already lived abroad. I just need to focus my energies on something that will help people mm -hmm. understand things that maybe understand better than them so I yeah. can help them with that information. Yeah. Do you feel comfortable talking about what you do for a living? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you do? What... So most of my income comes from teaching. 
Okay, um, teaching. Yeah, mm -hmm. I teach English to Chinese, uh, mostly children, some teenagers. I've done teaching for adults. I've had my own private students. I've taught for Korean companies, Vietnamese. I lived in Vietnam for five years, so I have lots of contacts there as well. So I, I sometimes teach Vietnamese. Um, a lot of it is Asians online. Yeah. How and long have you been doing that? I started in 2018 teaching wow. English online. So it's been a so while. It's been six years, yeah. All this time? All this time. Traveling and... Full-time job? Full-time, no, not, not... I mean, full-time in the 40-hour sense, no. But yeah. full-time for my main income and my main... Uh, working hours, yeah. So you can just live anywhere you want to, and as long as you've got internet. Which for ever, here has been a little bit difficult with the uh, power outages. Oh, well, a little minor, <laughs> little minor setback, you know. But, 10 hours yeah, of yeah. power outages per day, not a big deal. Yeah, at least it's not 24. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know that's, that's a whole other issue, but yes. uh, that's got to be tough. Have you ever been somewhere where you just, where you got somewhere, then all of a sudden you realize, shit, I ain't got no internet. You ever been in Not that really position? the internet part, but the speeds. So, I speed, I learned yeah. I learned at the beginning in 2018. I did I started in Brazil and then went to Argentina and I was I was mostly in South America for the you know from 2018 to 2022. So before I did this trip, I had already lived in South America for like seven years. Yeah. And basically, I realized in Argentina, I went to a hotel there and I was like, mm, you know, it's probably a hotel, probably has great internet. And I realized that the internet was Excuse so me. horrible. Yeah, honk that horn one more time, buddy. Yeah, we're, you don't mind if we do a video here, do you? That's okay. I'm just, you know, it's like we have a great relationship, you know. Man. So, favorite neighbor, right? You notice he's not honking anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he's scared of the grumpy old guy. Grumpy old guy. Like grumpy old gringo. <laughs> grumpy old gringo. Um, so, you started in Minnesota. In the first place, what kind of bike are you driving or it's riding? A Honda NC 700X. So seven, so it's like a hybrid. It's an on-road, off-road. It's off a touring road. bike, mostly touring. Touring. Touring, yeah. So it's, is, oh, touring, touring. Touring bike, yeah. yeah. It's not a, it's not a, an off-road bike. It's not a dirt bike. Yeah. But it's also not like a sport bike. It's kind of like looks like a mixture of the two. But can you take it in the desert? I've taken it off road, but not much. Okay. All because right. the tires are not meant for it. They're but not made for they, it. Yeah. They, I mean, I've gone up mountains many, many times, volcanoes in Mexico here yeah. already, up a, up a hill. So, so you took off from Minnesota, and you you knew exactly where you were going. No, I mean, oh, I knew I was going south. Okay. But <laughs> did you know you were going to be here, yeah. here in Ecuador? Yeah. I mean, yeah. With my journey and my channel, the idea is to show every single country in Latin America, continental Latin America, while I drive through it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I can't go to the islands very easily, you know, and the, you know, there's a lot of Latin American islands in the Caribbean, sure. but sending the bike there doesn't make sense. Right. So, so and, and I asked you this this morning about the Darien Gap, where everybody, I mean, you, you came down the, is it called the Pan American Highway? Right. <clears throat> so that's on the... Uh, Western coast of Mexico down into Central America is all along the central. You end up in Panama, right? Yeah. And then how did you get here? <laughs> so I did, <laughs> I traveled the West Coast of Mexico, but I'm not even sure if that's the Pan American per se. Mm -hmm. I, it's not like one real road, you know, yeah. it's just kind of like a series of roads. Yeah. So the one I took was uh, following the Pacific Coast. Okay. So yeah, I made it to Panama City. <clears throat> and then from Panama City, you can go a little bit closer to Colombia, but there's it's more like going into villages. It's a bit more like jungle and stuff. So I didn't even make it that much further out. I went to Cologne and some places. Then how did you take care of accommodations? I mean, did you did you just like show up at a place and then start looking for a room? Never. Or? No, no. I mean, okay. besides a couple, like besides, let's see, what was it? Here in Ecuador. Yeah. I didn't have any places because I didn't know... For the past many months, because of what's happening here, mm -hmm. the visas have been weird. Yeah. They've been kind of random, like 30 days for this yeah. person, 60 days for this person. I mean, coming by, by land, right? Mm -hmm. Coming by land, it's been yeah. complicated for the past, like, year. Yeah. So recently, actually, a couple of months ago, it was standardized. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, oh, we're going to follow the, uh, what is it, that system of, like, uh, the po international police? What's it yeah. called? The, whatever it is in Europe. And oh, they, awesome. they, they standardize their system of finding or, like, approaching criminals crossing by land. And that's... That gave 90 days to pretty much every okay. American with American passport. So I didn't know how much time I would get, so I didn't like book anything anywhere. So I yeah. was like, well, if I only get 30 days, I'm probably not going to stay in Quito. You know, if I only get 60 days, I'm probably going to do this. I'm mm -hmm. probably going to do that. But in general, when there's no visa problems, I know the time I'm going to get. Like Peru, I'm going to get 90 days. Yeah. I know where I'm going to be spending my time there. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I have 
the idea. You need to go down there? No, no. <laughs> Give him a, yeah, I'm about a ready. walloping? Yeah. <laughs> One more time, I'm on my way. <laughs> no. See, I, I plan things out in advance because I usually book through Airbnb. Now, I don't always book, like, directly on the site, like 100%. Sometimes I'll book, like, a, a week to make sure that I like the place, that the yeah. internet's good, and then, you know, talk to them about staying longer. Yeah. It doesn't always work out, you know, perfect because then someone yeah. book yeah. for those t that time. How old are you? 36. 36. Yeah. Got a wife? No. Girlfriend? Got a girlfriend flying in here if I can convince her with the uh, electricity yeah. not turning off constantly. She works online as well, yeah. so that's yeah. uh, something that really connected you us. You keep in touch She's, with her every day? Yeah, we just chatted on WhatsApp like 10 minutes ago. That's, oh, that, was, yeah. that was her. Okay. That was her. So she, yeah. she's from Pereira, which is near, near Medellin. Oh, wow. I met her wow. in Pereira when I was there. Okay. Has she been to the States? Yeah, she was. Uh, she worked in Dubai for okay. an airline, and she flew all around the world for I'm not sure how many years, but yeah. she she's pretty well traveled. Yeah. Um, she's she's definitely a unique type of Colombian, yeah. not, not the typical Colombian. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's your ultimate goal with this trip? So there's a there's a lot of things I'm trying to accomplish. I mean, besides just if things don't ever work out, becoming this super hit of like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. cool person doing cool things, and you know. In useful information if things don't work out to become super successful in the end it's basically just you know just having something to show myself mm -hmm. hey well you know yeah it, the, the channel never picked up but I did all these cool things I went through all of Central America already so I, I've already been I've been doing this for two years so I have a bunch of stuff that I already can like look back on even yeah, if I like sure. have to stop right now if I get in an accident and break my legs I have all of Central America to look back on. yeah so that's great so I'm, the idea is to kind of Finish all of all of Latin America, and South America is what you know. A lot more countries coming up, <clears throat> and if if in the worst case scenario, just have some memories to yeah. share. And best case scenario, I'm helping people you know with information about relocation. I'm helping people discover new places that they didn't know about yeah. that are undiscovered places like Manta. I didn't know anything about myself, yeah. you know. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm helping other people that don't know about it by right. talking to you and talking to everyone else that's involved, you know. Mm -hmm. And something I found that's really, really rewarding is meeting people like you, meeting people like Scott Allen Miller, all mm -hmm. these people that, you know, I met so many awesome expats on the way. I started interviewing people in Guatemala. Yeah. And it's like been some of the funnest parts of my trip. So that's sure. been something I've been doing a lot recently, and I really enjoy it. So, as far as your final destination, you mentioned you told me at breakfast this morning you're going to go to what's the furthest southern point you can go in Ushuaia. the world? Ushuaia. Ushuaia. Yeah. Is that in South America? That's that's the bottom tip of Argentina. <laughs> oh, yeah. it is. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait for you to get to Argentina because I want to see some video from there. So because... Scott Allen Miller just went there. So you should check out some of his videos. He went like last oh, week. Yeah. He just flew back. Yeah. And um, I won't be there for a while. But so you have to be patient. You have to be patient. Yeah. You know, I won't yeah. be there until next year sometime after yeah, Brazil. probably so. you got a long Brazil. ways to go. Yeah, yeah. I'm That's... spending six months in Brazil before Argentina. Okay. So it's going to be close to a year. <laughs> so how much of your time do you actually spend working and then how much time do you actually spend on this endeavor? I mean, can you percentage wise? I mean, you obviously got to work. That's how you make your money, how yeah, you yeah, make yeah. your living. That's why I asked you this morning, how are you funded? Yeah, yeah. You know, and so you work a full time job. Then you got to edit. You have to edit your videos. Are you doing any podcasts also? Or so actually, like for terms of work, like I, what I consider it is hobby work, which yeah. is kind of this channel. Right? It's kind of yeah. like a passion project. Yeah. If it turns into something that can replace my income or you know go above that, then I'll think the things through and change. Mm -hmm. At the moment, all of my most of my income is coming from these classes, right? Yeah. So it's not like full time per se, mm -hmm. because I first of all I just don't have the um, amount of jobs lined up at the moment. Like it's kind of a you know mm -hmm. the the wave, you know the. Yeah. the the wet ebbs of, of working online sometimes for, for at least for English online, ESL it's called, English as a second language, yeah. that type of job, it kind of goes up and down. There's a lot of work sometimes and there's a little bit of work. You have to go yeah. up and down, so you just have to take advantage when there isn't. So yeah, I'll spend maybe two, three, four hours teaching and then I'll focus two, three, four hours editing. Okay. I go to the gym almost every day because I'm trying to stay you know as, as healthy as possible. Yeah. yeah. And then, because um, I, like I said, I have Smart Fit mm -hmm. that I can go to. Most of South America, most of Latin America has yeah. same yeah. gym, same gym chain. 
and I started in Mexico, became a member, and it's been amazing. Yeah. Smart fit. Yeah. They need to. They need to sponsor me. I've been asking them for two years already. Right, yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Yeah. In your travels, have you ever been at a point? And if you need to think about this, you, I'll give you time, okay? If, have you ever been to a point where you thought, oh, fuck, I wish I hadn't have done this? Um, <clears throat> I wish I hadn't done this. You mean the, the entire trip? Yeah. I wish I wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't have done the entire trip? Or, or I wish, oh, I, yeah, I wish I wasn't here. Any, any, every, any point during your travel? Did you ever go someplace where you thought, I wish I hadn't come here? No. No? No. I mean, I'm a pretty adventurous person. Yeah. I spent five years in Asia before I did this trip. Yeah. You know, I lived here in South America already for seven years before I yeah. did the project. So it, yeah. I'm like the type of person that looks for the exotic thing. Sure. Right? And what about sure, crime? Sure, sure there's, been, there's been instances like I got hit by a truck in okay. Panama. Panama, a Hilux hit me on the road. And I luckily didn't get injured. My bike stopped working after he hit me. But then I had, you know, it was a, the most, one of the most stressful probably moments of my life. Okay. Because it was a week before I was shipping my bike over yeah, the Pan American, yeah. the, the, the Darien Gap to yeah. Colombia, to yeah. Bogota. And my bike wasn't starting. And I was in a town like three hours away from Panama City where I needed to send the bike. And I had all this stuff I had planned to do for my, my channel before leaving. And this guy, of course, he's, he's on the road. And there's like, you know, like really small town road and then he's turning and then or no he's he's straight just like crawling basically when when you see some latino crawling on the road you just go around them because they're just here in latin america they just do what they want yeah you just let, say okay you keep doing your thing i'll go around you and that's mm -hmm. what i did but he turned into me oh as i was going by and there was no turn there was no roads there was no like uh driveways there was nothing so he turned into me and i was like where were you turning bro they're like oh i'm trying to turn around i'm like why didn't you look around when you, before you mm -hmm. decided you hit this massive Hilux truck? And I'm like, dude, you're, you're driving a boat. Why didn't you look yeah. around? Yeah. They're just not used to, to the motorcycles there. So long story short, I got hit. I ended up having to pay him because he wanted me to pay him for his damages, even though he hit me. And then my bike wouldn't start. And that just shipping the bike to the airport was another $500. Yeah. Just, just the, the, the grua, you know, the yeah. uh, towing truck. And then towing it again in Colombia and then fixing it, which, yeah, a total more than $1,000 and a lot of headache. So that was, that was one of the most, like, roughest points. But, like, in terms of crime, in terms of, like, bad areas and stuff, no, people are friendly. Nobody's tried to people rob you. People are or, nice. Like, uh, yeah. what, actually, to be honest, the, the most problems I have are in the more developed and more gringo-style Americanized yeah, like, areas. Because, like North America? Well, <laughs> I mean, in there, yeah. Like yeah, home. Sure. Back home, like... There's, that's a whole different topic about, you know, yeah, sure. police crime and police, you know, people be afraid of the police. Yeah. He, he, here, people aren't afraid of the police. I'm afraid of going to areas that are like the nicer areas because the police know, okay, if I, if I see a foreigner, I could probably scare him into getting money. Yeah, you know? yeah. So generally, when I'm in there, actually, the, the more local it is, the less fear I have because they're like, what is this foreigner doing here? You know, mm -hmm. they've never seen a foreigner there. So they don't like think of taking advantage of it. So I actually have had better, less problems and a better time with, mm -hmm. you know, those types of issues yeah. in, in places that are less known, le lesser well known and, and what people consider to be dangerous. I've never had an issue. Yeah. I've stayed in some weird places. No problem. Yeah. You ever been uh, anywhere where you just thought, God, I wish I was back home? <laughs> I haven't lived in Minnesota since uh, 2011, 2012. Yeah. So, I mean, for me back home, it's not really the same sense of, you know, the typical person will say, you know, I, I created my career and this, you know, I did my career in this city or this state for yeah. this long. And that's kind of where I feel at home yeah. or people, oh, I grew up in this place, school, blah, blah, blah. Now you speak Spanish fluently, right? My Spanish is pretty good. Yeah. My Portuguese is suffering because I haven't practiced in years, but okay. I speak both of those. Yeah. Okay. All right. So when you get down to your final destination, what are you going to do after that? I'll drive up drive because up. when drive I go up. down to Ushuaia, yeah. <clears throat> I, I will have missed a couple of countries. I'll, I will have missed um, Chile yeah. and Uruguay. Uruguay, okay. Um, I'm not sure if I want to even enter the Guyanas because th that part of the country, for me, I'm trying to show Latin America. 
mm -hmm. in Guyana, I mean, that's English speaking. Yeah, yeah. And then there's French Guyana, which is part of France. And then there's Dutch Guyana, which is in Latin America. So those three areas, I mean, I haven't been to Venezuela as well. So my, we're crossing my fingers that things improve there okay. to the point where, you know, the plan is to get to Ushuaia at the end of 2025. That would be like December, beginning of 2026, start up through Chile, cross over to Uruguay, do another three to six months in Brazil, and then hit up, uh, Venezuela after that. Okay. And basically at that point, if, if I'm not, like, if I've not achieved what I thought I would achieve, you know, getting a lot of people, like followers, and, and helping people out with my relocation tips and all these things, if my channel hasn't picked up by then, I'll probably decide mm -hmm. what I'll do next. You know, I'll think, okay, I'll sell the bike, and I'm done, and I tried YouTube, and it didn't work. Yeah. Or I'll say, okay, that was awesome. Yeah. You know, look at all these things I've achieved, and yeah, my channel blew up. Who yeah. knows? Where did you actually grow up? Minnesota. Minnesota. So yeah. that's where your folks are? And yeah, yeah. So my dad's family? from North Dakota. Okay. And my mom's from near where I grew up, actually, okay. Minnesota. All right. And yeah, so I spent, you know, from... I was born in St. Cloud, which is central Minnesota, and then I grew up until I was... Uh, you know, I studied in Minnesota as well, my, my university years. I did those two study abroads that I mentioned, and... Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, after the study abroad, that's when I started really, you know, living living abroad pretty yeah, much full time. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, man, you got some some guts. You know, you you got more. I, I don't think I would have the courage to do what you're doing. You know, uh, but then again, I'm also twice your age. <laughs> you know, I'm 72, almost 73. You're exactly twice my age. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's like, now nah, I think I'm gonna see. I, I like I like my couch. You know, yeah. I like my TV and, and and I like doing this kind of stuff. So, all right, well, good. I'm glad you. I'm I'm glad I got to meet you. And you know, it's it's really interesting. I love just meeting people that are passing through here and going about their their life, living their life. You know. By the way, I was going to ask you, do you think you'd ever go to Europe? Yeah. So that was actually my plan before doing this trip. Okay. Is to buy a bike in England and go through Europe. And do something similar, you know. Yeah. Oh, look at you know these places, places you can live. I, I like focusing on expats because I've been an expat mm -hmm. my entire life. I've never actually had a visa. Yeah. I've never immigrated because I've never had a visa to live somewhere. Yeah. So I've always been the expat. That's why I thought, oh, this this word is good for me. Yeah. So I've never <laughs> actually had any visa anywhere I've been. Yeah. It's always been a tourist, yeah. a tourist stamp. You know, it's not tourist even a visa. Stamp, yeah. So yeah, I so was thinking Europe. Yeah, you're good for Ecuador for 180 days. It's 90, and then there's another 90 day extension. Okay. But I thought, right. well, pff, I got a lot left to, to check out in South America, so I'll just stick yeah. stick to 90. Probably leave at day 85, and then go to Peru. Okay, All right. Well, yeah. there's your 180 days, though. I mean, you can renew for yeah, exactly. A second yeah. 90, day. yeah, a second right. 90. But the, yeah. when I talked to the office about my bike, they said it's easier just to leave and come back. Oh really? Yeah, because yeah. of whatever processes they have with the, the bike imports you know okay right. so i thought oh well if i'm already at the bottom if i'm already at peru i'll just go to peru yeah. you know? <laughs> all right well thanks so much for taking the time to talk with me and i really i wish you lots of luck and i hope you keep in touch and you know <laughs> i'll be here for be a month i'd love to get some of your Absolutely. stories as well on my channel and Absolutely. Talk, chat, chat a bit more about the specifics about living here well me you know when when Stella gets back from the States, we'll get together and have some dinner or breakfast or whatever. I never eat lunch, but I always have breakfast or dinner. <laughs> you know, we can always, you know, get together. Yeah. Your girlfriend makes it here, it'll be great to, yeah. to meet her. Have a little you know, double and, date. Yeah, I would love yeah, it. Yeah, do a little double date. You know, <laughs> I don't know what we'll do, but yeah, you know, there's good places to eat here, you know. You you got lots of opportunity here, especially since you're mobile, you know, and you can go see all the different beach towns. It's cloudy today. It was sunny here the other day. I mean, it's, this is the that time of the year, so it's it is kind of winter time. Yeah. Here, you know, you can probably feel the chill in the air, can you? Yeah. Well, with, with the humidity that this high, like for me, yeah. you know, I wear this because yeah. of the sun on the bike. Yeah. But sure. also, it's you know, on the bike, it's chilly. Yeah. So I gotta make yeah. sure to keep keep my uh, long sleeves on. <laughs> good. Dress for the weather. Yeah. All right, well, good. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Same and to you, Don. Thanks for doing this. Looking yeah. forward to meeting up again later and Absolutely. having some more chats. Absolutely, we will. <laughs> okay, good enough.